Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over the difference between using and, and, and a semicolon when it comes to chaining together commands on the command line and writing shell scripts. In the past, you may have run multiple commands together using both options, and they appear to do the same thing, and in a lot of cases, you would get similar output, but there is a very subtle and important difference between both. So throughout this video, we're gonna be running some commands, looking at their exit codes and outputs, as well as going over some real world examples of when you may want to use either or. There's also this black post here hosted on localhost. It'll be live on my site, and I'll leave a link to this one in the description when the video is out. But there are a couple of high level overview details here that I'd like to go over, and I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to digest digest this if we can both see this together here. I also don't want to forget any important details here. So yeah, the short version is basically, you know, the double ampersand, aka and and. This is a logical and condition here, and it does support short circuiting. This is a very common uh, concept in programming. A lot of languages like Python and Ruby, etc. they all support this idea of, you know, if the first condition fails, then it is going to exit out that condition without bothering to even look at the other conditions here because we're dealing with an and. So, you know, let's say that you've got two commands running here, command A and command B, and you do something like A and and B, and let's just say command A fails, then B is not even gonna bother getting evaluated. This is really nice, right? Super efficient. Why even look at B if A failed if you're doing an and here? So super useful. And then, um, yeah, we have the semicolon here, and this is used to sequence multiple commands together. It's also used to terminate commands as well. So this is an interchangeable character with new line characters, and maybe you've seen this in shell scripts before. You know, typically, uh, depending on how you style things, uh, I like to do at least with um, if conditions, you know, I'll put the then on the same line as the if condition there, and I'll just separate that with a semicolon. You know, you may have seen that in your scripts. However, you know, you could put that then on a separate line instead of using the semicolon. You know, oftentimes you may see that with like a do while loop or something, like that and uh, yeah interchangeable meaning you know either option is going to work here uh, but the really big difference between the semicolon and 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 in this case you know it's not really going to short circuit anything we're just sequencing commands you know it's not a logical and or an or, or you know anything like that uh, in this case though it is going to run all of your commands in serial meaning you know if you had a uh, semicolon B, like A is going to run, it's going to wait until it's completed, and then B is going to run. It's not going to run them in parallel. We're actually going to look at some, uh, well, not really go into so many details here, but I'll link to another video I made about, you know, running things in parallel. But yeah, in this case, you know, if um, any of the previous commands fails, then uh, yeah, it's just gonna continue onwards and keep going. Now there is one exception to that one, right? If you happen to use set, uh, you know, this option here for error exit or the shorthand, you may have seen this also as set E, you know, that is going to exit the script early if any command fails, you know, that is gonna uh, not override the semicolon, but take precedence over that because, you know, that's an option you set in your shell script, right? Or your current shell, whatever it happens to be. So yeah, the first failing command is going to halt in that case, whether or not you use semicolon or and and. And then there is some common characteristics between both here, where the last run command in your sequence will be the returned exit code. So here's some examples of using both and 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 semicolon here. We're going to run some commands soon here. But yeah, in this case, and by the way, uh, the true command is going to return exit code zero. Uh, this is just a built-in function into your shell, you know, using bash and Z shell and some other shells as well. And then likewise, there also is the opposite of that, which is the false command. And that is going to return exit code one. These are really handy commands just to, you know, again, like test some conditions, test certain things. Uh, yeah, so in this case with the and and, it's gonna be true, true and false. So in this case, true is going to be evaluated. We're using and and. We don't need to short circuit because, hey, this is, this is working. Let's move on to the next one. And then true is going to execute cool let's move on to the next one and then false is going to execute you know in this case there's nothing after that so whatever uh, but in this case you know the exit code of this um, you know chained commands here would be exit code one because false here because that was the last run command likewise with semicolons you know true true false you know in this case true is going to run true is going to run and then false is going to run and it's going to return exit code one so in both cases yep there we go last run command in the sequence will be returned exit code Pretty important detail, um, but yeah, let's go over some examples here. And we're gonna be running these in the terminal, but I might as well just copy paste them from here just so we have a reference here. And by the way, you know, set error exit is not going to be uh, set in any of these except for the last one there, uh, which is gonna change something, some of the outputs, and we'll see that. But yeah, in this case, we can see that uh, we have false and and echo zero. This is uh, an example of seeing short circuiting in action here because false failed. Um, which means we have an and and here. This is a logical and. So both of these things need to be true for this uh, to be true a as a whole. So let's not even bother echoing because hey, the first one failed. So we can actually see uh, to get the last um, 
exit code of the previous command here, but you know, my terminal is set up to be the dollar sign will show red if it's one, or it's gonna be the regular whitish color there if it's zero. So in this case, failed as expected, cool. So next let's move on and do the same thing, but using the semicolon. So in this case, and sorry, I just uh, missed copied something here. It's kind of funny too when I do copy pasting, right? I'm sure you do the same where you hit control C or command C like 7,000 times, and then you hit control V or whatever once. Yeah, but in this case, we have a semicolon here, no short circuiting going on here, false failed. Cool, let's go on to the next command in the sequence, echo okay, and we get that, and then we do uh, exit code here. Uh, zero, didn't fail, it moved on, evaluated both, just as described. So now let's go on to the, um, some true conditions here, and then we can do the same thing here. And in this case, you know, the command didn't fail because true is exit code zero, meaning it's, uh, you know, it's good. So the command worked, so in that case, the and and is going to kick in. We're going to see the echo OK. And again, you know, we see the exit code zero here. I don't need to do it again, but you get the idea, right? It didn't fail because it didn't turn red. So now let's go to the next one here for true with the semicolons. And then we will do the same thing. And this is going to take a guess here, unless, well, you just saw the output there anyways. <laughs> this is also going to work, right? Because the next command in the sequence is going to run. Now, there is one subtle difference here. Uh, when you use set E, you know, I just used the shorthand version of it just so it's a smaller command here. But in this case, since set E is set here, a false is going to fail, in which case then set E is gonna kick in to be like, hey, you know what? Like one of these commands failed. You know, I don't care that you're using semicolon or whatever. Uh, let's exit out here right away. And we can see it did exit out here. And the exit code of this one is going to be one. Now you may be wondering like, why did I wrap these in parentheses? That's a really good question. You know, doing a command group here, basically running these things in a subshell because if we omit these then well i guess could we do it now yeah let's not do it now but um ah, actually let's do it now okay so take a wild guess what would happen here if i were to run this command without uh the parentheses here so if we were to do this and this what is going to happen yep completely uh destroyed my terminal session. And I didn't want to do it here with one open because then my whole terminal would have closed and I would have to resize windows and do all that fun stuff here. But yeah, in this case, what happens then is um, set E is going to be set in my current shell, meaning like literally this one right here, and then false is going to fail. And then set E is going to be like, cool, like your whole cell sh shell session is going to be uh, terminated and there it goes. So yeah, wrapping that into, into a subshell, let's just, just run in its own subshell. And, you know, technically I can run bash, you know, I am running Z shell here. So actually let me just run Z shell again here. So now I've got like a second Z shell running, although that failed, uh, I didn't anticipate that. But yeah, in this case, um, yeah, it still opened up a second Z shell which then put me, well, actually let's do it in bash because it's gonna be a little bit better to see because in this case, my terminal is uh, different, right? It's not, I don't have a bash RC set up, but my Z shell is. So we're actually in a bash session right now. And then we can see set E here is going to fail without the command group here. And then I'm actually put back into my original Z shell. So that's just a quick aside there and, and why that was wrapped in parentheses. Cool. So yeah, let's go over some real world use cases here. Um, yeah, we're gonna jump between the terminal, I suppose, maybe, and, or maybe just stick to here, it depends. But like most things, uh, it depends, right? Like when should you use and and when should you use semicolon? And actually we're gonna see an example here of where both maybe could be used, but probably you're gonna be doing this one. And yeah, I guess like one textbook example here would be something like running, you know, an app get update and then an app get upgrade. And if you're not familiar with app as apt as a package manager, you know, it's used on Debian based systems. You know, there's other package managers with different distros here, but the update is going to update all of your latest repo lists there that are available to let apt know like, hey, by the way, there's like potentially new versions of these things available. And then upgrade is actually going to do the upgrade itself. Like, you know, maybe you're running Docker and you have a custom Docker app list, which is uh, what's set up if you follow Docker's installation instructions. And then, you know, the upgrade is gonna upgrade Docker to whatever latest version that you want here. So using and and is pretty nice there with the short circuiting because, you know, if the update command fails and you don't get a new apt repo list, then like, why are we bother upgrading? Because it's like, well, what could be upgraded if we don't get the updated list? You know, you're gonna have the current list on the system, which is probably gonna be uh, not changed from the last time or whatever. So the upgrade wouldn't even work. So in that case, using and and is a really good idea, um, probably, right? That's the most likely outcome of what you want there. But 
you know, there's no law saying you can't use semicolon. So, I mean, you could totally do this if you want. And if the app get update happens to work, then, you know, the upgrade will run and, you know, the command will work in the way that you intended as long as the update command worked. You know, that's why I said at the very start of the video, like you may have used both interchangeably, sort of, kind of, and sort of got the same result. So like in the happy case, if all the commands work, then yeah, you would get the same result in the end there. But yeah, if the update failed, then I don't know, that's probably not the use case. So like maybe for this one, like I wouldn't say like, I would always use and, and, but probably, you know, and then I kind of just say like, to be honest, like I almost always use and, and, unless I know I want everything to run. So yeah, in my shell scripts also just a quick aside, like I tend to set error exit on all of uh, my shell scripts there because you can opt out of that behavior like situationally, like maybe you just have a small bit of code in your shell script where, you know, you expect a potential error or an error to happen and then you catch it in a custom way. Maybe you have like a an if condition there that does whatever you need to do. Maybe you, I don't know, set the output or of the program to a variable so you can do some custom whatever, you, whatever. Anyways, that's what I typically do there. Uh, but with that said, you know, semicolon could be useful, I guess. Like if you have some independent tasks that you want to run. Like for example, you know, let's say you're installing my app, right? And then you're installing another app. So if these apps are not associated together in any way whatsoever, then a failure to install my app shouldn't affect another app from being installed. So in this case, yeah, you know what, maybe you should use the semicolon here because then uh, both of them will either be installed successfully. You know, if my app fails, we're still going to run on and, and install another app and then you're good to go. But you could make a case, you know, uh, typically, and this is just like a general pattern, if things really can be run independently and there's no association or dependencies between two things, that's actually a pretty good use case to run them in parallel as a background task. So for example, in that case, you can use uh, single ampersands here after each of them, and you would launch both of these commands in the background and yeah, then they would just both execute happily independently on their own. And the benefit there is, you know, uh, to install another app, you don't need to wait until this one finishes. Like if this command takes two minutes to finish and this one also takes two minutes to finish, you know, you'd have to sit here for four minutes for both of them to finish. Whereas if you ran them in the background, then they can run in parallel two minutes uh, each one, and then you'd be done in two minutes here. So let's see, do I have Jekyll running in the background? I do. So we're not gonna go over this post here because I have a whole separate video for this one. I'll leave a card up for that. Or if you want to read the blog post, you know, I'll have a link there in this video so you can check it out there. But you can even do things like wait, like for example, you can run both of these in parallel and then wait until they're done and then do something else. So a lot of options using background tasks. So I would for sure uh, look into that if they're independent, in which case, like really, could you even want to use, like should we even use semicolon? Yeah, I mean, whatever. Maybe you just have some one-off task that you're just writing uh, real quick and you just want to use it and it works. So that's also an option there. But yeah, this is not meant to be like an exhaustive list of like, you know, this is the, the, the only one you use case where you're going to use and and. But I just wanted to supply both just to give you some ideas and you know maybe when you want to choose one, one or the other so that is going to do it for this video you know if you like the video please give it a thumbs up it really does help a lot thanks a lot for watching i'll answer any questions you might have in the comments and i'll see you in the next one